Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use, so sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or carp, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong, they'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Now, welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, a big show coming your way tonight, as always, with Cod, Snapper, Flathead, and the old Mulloway continuing to dominate in Catch of the Week tonight. Tonight I'll ask the panel, should pensioners and kids have a fishing licence? It's a debate that has been going on for way too long, and I think it's time we have an accurate measure on how many people go fishing in Victoria. More of that after uh, we talk a few things about fishing. Apart from that, we'll talk Cod Classic and a fair amount of discussion on the western side of Port Phil Bay tonight with our special co-host. But before all that, a big welcome to Adam Ring as always. Welcome, Ads. Thanks, Dave. Bit of unsettled weather this week, which has triggered, I guess, probably another little transition period in uh, Victoria's fishing with uh, Port Phillip taking over, I think as a front runner in the snapper stakes, which means the Western Port guys are just starting to look at whiting. And uh, I think we'll see, that'll be, that'll start to dominate catch of the week, I think, from here on out. Almost uh, unsettled today for the all yeah. four seasons. I mean, it started off, I think I jumped in the car this morning very early, it was 26. Yep. Then it went down to 22. Then it got colder, then it got hotter. Yeah, then, then it, it got cooled humid down and again. then it just so, got sticking uh, hot. <laughs> it's that time of year, yeah. you know, it's, uh, what do you do? So, and as we speak, Trelly is practicing his fist pumping. He's calling out for Angus and he's ready to burst into ACDC tunes over at Eddie Head Stadium. So tonight we are joined by Michael Moore from Tackle World Geelong. Welcome to Talking Fishing, Mick. Well, thanks for having me. It's and you're no talk. stranger. You've been uh, here before yeah, and sat on the before. couch and yeah. um, used to be a regular on 3AW when we, before we got yep. the yep. flick from 3AW <laughs> and you do the old radio show down at Geelong and that sort of stuff. So uh, many people, um, maybe if they haven't seen you on TV before, they're putting a face to the name yeah, now. Yeah, hopefully. It. I hope it's not too ugly for them. No, nah, all good. Um, <laughs> How is Geelong fishing? Cryo Bay, you guys down there, you're sick of netters. Yep. <coughs> it's got to come better over the, you know, the next few years, I, I was going to say, is really, really going to change dramatically. But right now, how's the fishing? Um, it's It's been up and down. We had a, a fantastic early season snapper run. Yeah. Um, and then it has become a little bit patchy. I have had some reports this week of guys getting some bag limit catches at times. But... Um, I, I think we're going to have that little break through January and then come February things will really fire up again. It's pretty typical for this time of the year for things to go a little bit quieter. Yeah, okay. Yeah, on the snapper front, but in saying that, the widening have improved over the last couple of weeks. I read your fishing reports every week, your local ones, yeah. and one of the things I love about down your way, you're right on the, you know, a beautiful pristine bay and you've got your whiting, your snapper, your gummies and all that sort of stuff. But you look over your back shoulder, you've got all those freshwater lakes, yeah. uh, which, you know, you've got Chinooks, you've got your trout, you've got monster redfin, you've got the Barwon estuaries. Like, yeah. You've got it pretty good down there. Yeah, we really are blessed down there yeah. with, with the freshwater options and the estuary options. And even right through the middle of Geelong, the redfin in the Barwon <laughs> River have late have been a real feature. Mm. Yeah. We're going to talk heaps about Geelong and Cryo Bay and all that uh, fishing on the western side of Port Phillip Bay later on. But don't forget, you can keep up to date with all the info from tonight on our Facebook page with Catch of the Week, Hotspots and much more. Don't forget to like our page. And if you want to see a repeat of the show or you want to send a copy to a friend, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you know someone who you think would like to watch the show, tell them we now stream live on the internet. Yep, right now, streaming live on the internet. No excuses not to watch us. You'll find the correct links to Facebook, YouTube and live streaming on our website, talkingfishing.com.au. So and you get a pretty good signal down Geelong too. You were saying that uh, yeah. pretty strong following of the show down there? Yeah, we pick it up and, and it's it's got a huge following down there. Guys really love the show and I'm sure there's plenty of them down there in Geelong tuning in right now. Don't tell Trolley I said so, but I mean we try and you know ask Trolley about Cryo Bay and he's <laughs> <laughs> got Murray Cod, he's got no idea. He tries to make it up every week. But no, no, he's all good. <laughs> Boys, let's have a look at what's being caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Mm -hmm. Catch of the week. Well, you get to see yourself on TV. And with the popularity of Murray cod fishing, particularly in Lake Eildon, and the big cod classic that was on on the weekend, uh, you know, some some 
beautiful time. fish and you just can't do catch of the week justice anymore boys no. there's just too many photos too much, being yeah, sent too so much to go through. tried to mix it up a bit but let's head up to Lake Eildon first and uh, Glenn Woodbridge wrote into us and said he was fishing for 10 minutes when he got his first cod for the season and have a look at that a nice 75 centimetre out of Murray uh, out, of, out of Lake Eildon sorry isn't there a real buzz around oh. Murray cod and Mick we're having a chat off air yeah. between the three yeah. of us over dinner and there is a buzz you know us on the Mornington Peninsula, yep. you guys down in Cram and David, all the way over to Geelong, Mick, there's just a buzz around Murray Cod. People want to target them, people mm. want to want to catch them in every way possible, whether yeah. it be on top water or just soaking a scrub worm. It's something that's really now in the forefront of anglers' minds. They want to get stuck into it. Yeah, yeah there's a real excitement down our way, and I think those slot limits have, have really, you know, got... The guys are really positive about the future of the Murray Cod at the moment. Mm. And as you and said, the Adam, you don't need to travel too far these days. Yeah, there's some right. good populations getting thing. closer to Melbourne. That's so. right. There's been a lot of cod put in that Goulburn River around Seymour, which isn't far away for anyone in Melbourne, that's for sure. Yep. Mm. The Cod Classic was on at Lake Marwala on the weekend, one of the biggest fishing competitions in Australia. And uh, Ben Trevine has been up at Lake Marwala and he got himself a lovely 100-centimetre uh, or one-metre long metering. Murray Cod and the he's now joined the meter. club. Look at that. He's joined the club. He's got to be pretty happy with that and uh, he look, looks pretty happy there. Look so. guts on that bad boy. Well done to Ben. Um, now, snapper time, boys, because yep. uh, it's really turned on on this uh, eastern seaboard Mick yeah um, you definitely. know we're seeing some really good catches now and you know a lot bigger bags there's not just one or two or three Correct. fish per trip they're really starting to fire now Western Port's gone a little bit slow on the on the snapper but I think anglers are you know changing over to the yeah, old whiting right. but have a look at this one young Adam Gatt was out with his dad and he got his PB of 5.5 kilo snapper off Ricketts Point that's a cracker of a fish do you yeah. know how I know this kid's a gun how his name Really? Yep. <laughs> Legend. Really? Okay. Legend. I just knew him from Mate's Day. He was actually, <laughs> it was the youngest deckhand at go. Mate's Day. Young so Adam. Congratulations is, uh, to you legend. as well, Adam, for involving yourself in such a good cause too. And now the on next the one, apparently this bloke likes to brag not, so his <laughs> wife sent in a lovely photo. And uh, Graham Brooks, well done, mate. Six and a half kilo snapper. He's probably belting his wife. No <laughs> domestic violence. We don't mean that in a nasty way. But he's probably just, you know, giving her a whack. And said, hey, what did you send that photo in for? I want my photo on TV. But there well done, go. Graham. A lovely six and a half kilo some, off carrot. Some big fish still in the bay. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's absolutely. a beautiful looking fish, that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. They're good. They are. They're good looking fish. Yeah, yeah they have been all season yeah. too. Um, I'll tell you something that's starting to pop up in a lot of reports, and this one came actually by the shop uh, during the week. And the flathead, the big blue spots, mm. really starting to make a showing and uh, some good fish around. And this one was caught off Coronet Bay. Look at that. Uh, Chris Plant, his first trip out. Now, they've got plenty of snapper. But all you want to do is show us his flatty. <laughs> yeah. 1.53 kilos. Thank you very much. Yum. That's a good flatty. Mm. Yeah, correct. Delicious. Yeah, I'd yum. wrap that in beer better any day. Sensation. But we will see more and more of them. Definitely. You know, this water's getting warmer. Those things sit, you know, sometimes in a metre of water. Yeah. It's just and, that, and that's, why, and that's why we'll start to see more of the whiting yeah. fishermen start pushing up into the shallow water. Yep. And we'll see some good flatties as bycatch. And are these things going to stop this season? No. I don't know. It's the best. Gary Rose, have a look at that. This it's is the, one of the many Mulloway sent to us this week. They're all big. Yeah. They're all big. That was 24 kilos, that one. Yeah, they're all big. Um, they all seem to be sort of 15 kilos plus. That's amazing, isn't it? It's out of control. It's, yeah. That is really exciting because I know there's been a few anglers so far in the last few weeks which have spent years, not sessions, years chasing them and have knocked off that first one. Yeah. It's phenomenal fishing mm. at the moment. Mm. Yeah, we found um, quite a few fish starting to come out of the Bowen River, but nothing in that, that sort size, of league. But yeah. I think over the next few years, we did have a really good breeding year on them, I think four or five years ago yeah. when yep. their drought broke. Yep. So they're only going to get better and better over the next couple mm. of years. Mm. It is good. Um, if you'd like to send in a pick of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, Email your fishing pink to info at ifish.com.au. Mick, after the break, I want to ask you, uh, when we get into dis discussion time, what are the styles of fishing you do in the Barwon Estuary? You know, is it boat? Is it easy to access? Can you do, you know, dewy fishing, uh, land-based and those sort of things? What, what um, methods you use and all that sort of stuff? Coming up on Talking Fishing Product of the Week, we're going to talk about that and we discuss should kids and pensioners have a fishing licence straight after this on Talking Fishing. Talking fishing. Make mine, make mine a Mornington 
G'day, David Kramer here. I'm a massive fan of the Mazda BT50, having personally driven and owned one for more than five years now. And to tell you what, you can't beat it for an all-round great ute and a great tow vehicle. Get into Mornington Mazda before the end of the month and grab yourself a run-out bargain. Plus, with every BT50, you get all this $500 worth of fishing gear for free. I made mine a Mornington Mazda. Make mine, make mine a Mornington Mazda. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. It is that time of year where people are starting to think about their holidays, heading away uh, on, on Boxing Day or thereafter, and there's so many things to pack. Yep. You want to get all the light gear in the car, you want to take all the little things you only drag out of the shed once a year, and ads, you've got a whole heap of them to show to people. A whole heap of them. <laughs> these, these, are, these probably double as a great little Christmas gift when yeah. we see a lot of people this time of year who are buying for partners, boyfriends, mm. husbands, whatever. It'd have to be the biggest time of year that females come into yeah, the shop. Yeah, that's right. And they might not necessarily know what, no. what everyone uses, what they like. So this is just a little handy selection of things that everyone can do with. I'll start with the Frable Net. The what? Well, the Frable Net. Look at that. Right down there. That's, it, it looks like a weapon yeah. at this point. But that's the beauty of it. It, pr it can be used as a weapon, but we won't <laughs> go there. Uh, it's easy to store. And as you push it out, it turns into a net. There you go. They come in various sizes. This is the small one. Uh, they make a medium sized one where their net head's just that little bit bigger. And then there's a big one, which is crazy long, big net head. But they are great um, for well, everyone. That'd be perfect for stowing in your tinny when, you right. when you have a lot of room around the place. And, and just, that's why, that's why yeah. they've been so popular because you can store them anywhere. It's as easy, it's almost like it, almost like working a shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> Pull it all in and it all stores. I was going to say a beach umbrella, but anyway. Oh, or a beach umbrella, Dave, <laughs> if that's the way you're more inclined. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that all stows down inside the tube. Yeah. And that's ready to go. So that's just a handy little, yeah. I guess, Christmas gift for those who have got boats or don't have big places and need to store things, which is always a little yep. bit of a problem. This is exciting, Dave. There's been a bit of a flurry. We we're just talking about it before we, we uh, come back to air in the last break. And there's a few of these getting about now. These are an Esky, which also double as a live bait tank. Now, this one's pretty large, so it's a bit hard to see. but your aerator mounts to the side so it sits all on the it's esky. got a proper clip on it and everything it does, so that you can yep. so uh, that, clip that on. sits that sits straight on there yep the tube goes through the hole in the in the side of the esky which can you turn that around to show for it? yeah it's kind of it's kind of hard to see so, yeah, there, you can see that all right there's, there's the, the little hole, hole there yeah. now as you open it up and your little aeration stone yeah, sits in there you've got your little tub which you can put bait and bits and pieces now the stone, oh, I just covered my face, this is really hard to see, um, <laughs> the stone goes through and sits inside. So that's yep. always generating bubbles, generating oxygen mm. for your live baits. If you're not using it as a live bait esky, there's a little plug. Yeah. Stick the plug in and now you use it as your normal esky. Yep. Fill it full of ice, put a few cans in it, a few softies, a couple of waters and you're good to go. Mm. Yeah. But that is, These are going to be a huge Christmas item. for taking yabbies. Yep. Bash shabbies, if you're you know in the boat and you want a bit of salt water and yep. your bash shabbies and all that sort of stuff. Well, we'll um, and it's going to keep them for days. Like, how good's that? I reckon we'll find as kingfish season comes into play, yep. smaller tinnies, smaller boats which don't have the plumbed live bait tanks, yep. which don't have a lot of space to even put one in. That doubles as your esky. You can use it as a seat, but you can keep your live baits. <coughs> Whether it's your yakkers or your slimies or any of that sort of bits and pieces, you can keep them there and you can keep them alive and you keep them fresh for your kings. They're going to be a, a Christmas hit. Yep. I think. Few different sizes. You mainly see the large ones about. Uh, and then as we continue but, through but the small, ones. I think the smallest is either 8 or 12 litre yeah, from memory. That you can throw over your shoulder and walk a river if you exactly. want. Exactly. If, if yeah. For guys fishing the Western Lakes, yeah, Bull and yeah. Eye, um, Parham Beat, where you've got your gudgeon and your bullhead, hmm. put your pots down, go for a fish, come back, keep them in that. Yeah. Everything's by your side and you're ready to go. Nothing beats live bait. Yeah, guys systems. fish in the bow and in those areas for Mulloway with their small live salmon and mullet. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. There you now, go. Mick, I'm going to throw the next one to you because this is a pretty hot Christmas gift, Dave. I'll get you to throw over the martini, oh, Tim. <laughs> this is tailor-made for Christmas. Yeah, these are these have been a really popular item every year and they are a fantastic gift idea. You, in this one, you've got, you've got the the tin which presents really nicely and is easy to wrap up there's no sharp edges on it but inside there is a couple of sharp edges yeah. <laughs> you've got a couple of sizes of knives one that's ideal for for your snapper and your larger fish your gummies and things like that and then you've also got your smaller knife in here which is ideal for your trout 
your whiting and that sort yeah. of stuff. And it's you know <coughs> it's really well presented. So it, it's always a popular item on the on the Christmas list for everyone. As well as that, you've got this free lure that comes with it as well. So that's an absolutely awesome one. Beautiful. So again, great great Christmas gift because yeah. everyone needs a good knife. Martini is as good a quality as it gets for yeah, a fisherman. They are a fantastic blade. So great gift idea. And Mick, while you're still on a roll, mate, the old seat backpack, yeah, the Christmas this is, special. This is a classic one for for those ones that are, you know getting a bit older and they need a seat when they're sitting along the riverbank <laughs> there. But it's it's a backpack. It's got your two straps there. It's also a bag with about three or four compartments inside it. Here you've got a large zip up front area so you can even put bait in that easy to wash out and then quite easily folds out to a chair with the back on it just handy and it it's is. a great little gift thing when yeah. you, you got your caravan dave you take the caravan mm. down to the peninsula every year even just for those nice balmy afternoons you can sit on the beach even if you've got a rod out or not it doesn't matter yep. take in the sunset Perfect. have yeah. a couple of drinks and away you go great gift that one uh, and this one i think this is probably more of a, a gift idea when you're not too sure what you do this is this is great for the holidays. So many people holiday on Port Phillip Bay. It's crystal clear water. We get those nice, balmy, calm nights. Have a step out in the water. You only have to go up to your knees after dark. Put the old prawn light down. No, we're not actually looking for prawns, but put the prawn light down. Have a hand spear on you. Single prong hand spear, so she's all legal. Flathead, squid, mm. flounder. The whole kitten caboodle. You'll be absolutely amazed at what you can see of a night time. Crabs. That's it. Fish. The bay yeah, the yeah. bay comes alive. It does. Yeah, so and quite often in one walk. to two meters uh, one to two feet exactly. of water. Exactly. You, know, you only have to go to your knees. Yeah. Um, shine that light and watch the fish come to you. It's one of those great activities for the kids, those warm balmy nights when it's a bit too warm, no air conditioning in the caravan go for a walk. I think it's one of those <coughs> things. You'll be very surprised. It might actually inspire you to take a fishing rod one night yeah, and have a blind have a flick well. because there's some good fish around yeah. and not much water. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So plenty for people to think about and you'll get all of those things in any good tackle shop. Just go and check them out. So now boys, a couple of things I want to talk about quickly. Um, just remind people at home that next week's show, uh, we've actually got Rod Barber, who's a senior fisheries officer. He's joining us on the couch. So all things uh, to do with fisheries um, officers and yeah. what they do for a living and all that sort of stuff. Rod's been around for um, many, many years. And for people at home, if you've got a question for Rod, if you want to ask a fisheries officer a question, just send us, send us an email, kramer at ifish.com.au and uh, we'll put your question to Rod but don't ask him what happens with the uh, fees for boat ramps, yeah. please, because we're, we're just overloaded with that, with that topic. So don't ask him that. Anything uh, fisheries related would be great. So a um, couple of quick things. Cod Classic, uh, biggest fish overall, Steve Hobbs, 115.5. It's a big fish. And Matt Rogers, I think, got first and second in the kayak division. Uh, his best was 102 centimetres. How good's that? That's great. That'd tow you yeah. around the lake a bit. Yeah, in the yak, kayak, it? Yeah. <laughs> Let alone lifting it in. Yeah. They're good fish. Um, we were talking earlier on about how many anglers there are in Victoria. How many people, in fact, that's, I, get, I think the, the correct statistic is how many people go fishing at least once a year in Victoria. Now, there's been a number of studies done. Um, there was the national one, I think, done by the Commonwealth Government, and it said that in Victoria there was around about 600,000 uh, anglers that go fishing at least once in Victoria. Then. I don't know, five, six years ago, whatever it was, um, 721,000 was the figure. There's now a new study that says that there is 838,000 people go fishing in Victoria. The concerning thing for me is um, that when compared with, there's an annual report on the license sales, yep. okay? So if Ernest and Young are saying that there's 838,000 people go fishing in Victoria, well, there was 288,498 fishing licenses sold last year, which equates to only 34% of those people have to buy a license. So that's saying that 66% didn't. Now, is that kids and pensioners? It's hard to believe if that. You take, if you take out the two-day licenses, only 22% of people have to have a license. So what happens is those 22%, now I've got the breakdown of, uh, what is it, one month, one year and three years, yep. but those 22% of people are virtually funding the stocking in Victoria, the fisheries officers that get paid out of the license money, all the projects, 22% are really carrying the load. Now, 
I don't, I don't know what's accurate and what's not. I yep. really don't. I mean, Ernest Young, do, they have a set formula of how they do these things. But the concerning is, the concerning thing is that if it really is 838,000, uh, is that less and less people are buying license? Because under 721, I think about 40 odd percent, I think it was 45 to 47 percent of people had to buy a license. Has that now dropped? Yeah. Or, or has the figure just gone up too high and yeah. it's not quite so, accurate? So I, I realistically, don't know. Realistically, realistically, who's legally not buying a license? So, uh, seniors card holders? Yeah. What, well, what's I the, think, what's, no, when I do you get a seniors all card? All pensioners. State not concession just, card holders. Yeah. yeah. Um, and under 18, and under 18. Yeah. yeah. So, Really, if you, if you wanted to break it down into, I guess, a form where you can talk about it and kind of understand mm. it, seniors and kids. Yeah. You're trying to tell me that 60 percent of the anglers in Victoria are either seniors 66%. or kids. Hard to believe. I uh, think. Uh, it is, and, and so the answer to it is, if we want to get really fair income and get some accurate figures, is have everyone not buy a license but have a license Licensed, okay yep. now Alison Webb works for fisheries now she's from I think Canada and uh, she gave some some figures the other day to the uh, fisheries roundtable I wasn't there but secondhand knowledge that in British Columbia there um, 100 percent of people have to have a license okay from the age of 16 to 64 there's a set fee for greater than 64 years of age it's a reduced fee and under 16 you have to have a license but there's no fee but and you're still going to have a license. Yeah, but you're still going to have a license. So you've got to come in, and it doesn't matter if you're a three-year-old or four-year-old or something. If you're going fishing with your dad and you're going to hold a rod, you've got to have a license. So your thoughts, boys? Oh, I think it's hugely important. I, I, it's a, if, When we have issues such as we've had over the last decade or so with marine parks, yep. um, netting, um, we've got the, the water allocations around the place. When we go into to our political representatives and things like that, we need to have an accurate figure of the numbers that we've got so we can walk in and say, instead of saying we've got 250,000 mm. licensed anglers, if we can go in there and say we've got a million anglers signed up, and I think it's important that the kids and under 18s, they, they don't get charged anything, and, and the seniors as well, but they need to have that reg book. Everyone mm. should have a reg book and understand it, and it's, it's just main thing is weight of numbers when we have these major political issues really the, the problem with introducing a fee to pensioners is that's not going to win votes for any politician no, so no. it's going to be really hard so what about if from next year anyone that turns 65 has to have a license and it's yeah and so you introduce it to new people getting to that age that it's a reduced fee yeah. and it might be half price or whatever yeah. but what about if it started next year so anyone yeah, in the past, it's already obtained that uh, year of age. They don't have to buy one. Yeah. But let's start setting it up for the future well, uh, and gradually work towards everybody being licensed. I think more the whole underlying current of the whole thing is exactly what you're saying. We need, and because everything is getting so political, yeah. the, the recreational fisherman is standing up for themselves. Hmm. They want things to be better. We can't be guessing on how many people are fishing. Hmm. It's just... We can't it's it's too big to be guessing it's, now. It's, it's too big a business. Yeah. And, well, and now you've yeah. got the state government saying they want to reach... A million. A million anglers. Yeah. You don't want to be guessing that. No. Because that's something that's a big deal. They're, they're mm. selling it to us as a big deal. So we want, we want the facts. Now, as far as getting into the cost, we won't go there because we could talk about it all night. Yeah. But I think it is important that everyone does carry a licence. Love to hear your views for the people at home. Kramer at ifish.com.au. Let us know your views because um, it's, it's going to be a big topic soon. Yeah. Coming up on Talking Fishing Fisheries News and we talk Karaya Bay with Mick right after this. Talking Fishing. Product of the Week, brought to you by Tackle World, now with eight great locations around Victoria. Tackle World, where our advice is priceless, that's why it's for free. See you down at Tackle World today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now it's time for the news, the fishery news. Sounds a bit fishy to me. 
And a little bit of news coming through this week. Number one, we'll get straight into it. Expanding horizons for Gippsland bass stockings. Uh, 17 waters across Gippsland shared in 120,000 Australian bass fingerlings last week to further improve freshwater fishing opportunities for anglers. You can see the table up there on your screen at home and there's, uh, well, it might be 18, I think, there on the screen. So, <laughs> um, But it's, it's, look, it is fantastic news for anglers that love that. Since 2002, uh, there's been nearly 560,000 bass fingerlings throughout Gippsland and they're doing re really well in most places. One of the new waters for this season is the Timbara River, which received 10,000 bass fingerlings near its junction with the Tambo River. Hospital Creek east of Lake Tyres was also new and received 3,000 fingerlings, and you can see all the numbers in the rest of them there. So that's a really big thing, and I think, you know, we're talking about Murray cod growing and people getting excited. I think bass is another thing that yes. you talk to most anglers, none of them caught a bass. That's right. There's yeah. a lot of people that haven't caught a bass, and yeah. I think we're going to see that in, you know, perhaps five or six years. I mean, Blue Rock's only just really had its access open. And, and have a look at that. Blue um, Rock just, just scored yeah. another 25,000 fish. Yeah. Lakeland Maggie, a lot of people go down there over the holidays. That just scored another 10,000 fish. Yep. A lot of people wouldn't even realise there is bass in Glen Maggie. No. Nah. So that's awesome. It's, it's, oh, it's going to be a growing fishery very, very shortly. Yeah, we have uh, a, a lot of people from Geelong heading over to, and fishing Blue Rock purely yeah. to go down there. And I mean, that's a decent day trip for them and yeah. plenty of them have been doing it. It's a beautiful spot. Yeah. It is good. It really is a nice spot. Should get down there more often. Yeah. Now, so <laughs> anyway, uh, second one came from... Um, uh, I guess more on a safety point of view, marine safety, and Victorians must be safer on the water this summer. Too many people, guys, in boating accidents, dying, we've seen kayaks going out in 30 knot winds, yep. guys running into rock walls and all that sort of stuff. But the Andrews Labor government is urging Victorians to be safer on the water this summer with the launch of ma uh, Maritime Safety Victorias. They change their name every year too. <laughs> I thought it was Transport Safety Victoria. <laughs> Maritime Safety Victoria's summer safety co campaign, wear a life jacket or wear the consequences. Minister for Ports Luke Donnellan today launched the safety campaign at Station Pier, coinciding with the 10th anniversary of the introduction of life jacket laws in Victoria. Uh, Mr. Donnellan also announced the recruitment of 25 additional boating safety officers to promote safety standards at high use boating locations in an effort to reach out to the more than 10,000 boaters across the state. I reckon there's not too many people that have been out snapper fishing this season that haven't seen them on the water because I don't know about over your side Mick but they've certainly been blitzing around the mouth of the Patterson River getting guys going in and out. Yep. Um, they've been down on the Mornington Peninsula, I've seen the boat out there a few times but they are really out and about. Yeah they've been red hot um, down in the Geelong area and they are, have got a zero tolerance on, mm. on anything at the moment so if you've got everything you'll be fine but uh, if you're lacking one thing most of the fines start at three hundred dollars, so it makes it an expensive day yeah, out in the water. Right, yeah, that's right. Hottest topic's got to be inflatable life jackets, and yeah, not, service, no yeah. one has any idea about when you've got no. to get them serviced. And we've tried to talk about it on here, yeah. and it's um, very, very grey area. There isn't it? There still seems like there's too much of a grey area. Yeah. I think. And it's the same. They come into the shop. They say, "When does it need to be serviced, and how often?" And you have to say to them, "Well, it's a grey area." Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's up to the manufacturer. Yeah. Exactly. It's based on your date of purchase, not the date of manufacture. Yeah. Yeah. I had a guy the other day, and I said, "He said, so what happens if that's been sitting on your shelf for ten years?" I said. It starts today when you buy it. Exactly. It just doesn't make sense. Which, yeah. which in actual fact means that the cylinder has been sitting there untested for ten years. Yeah. Hmm. It doesn't. It's it is it's a massive grey area. It just anyway, it's anyway, one of those things. We're not the rule no. makers, <laughs> um, but it's something that I think over time, very shortly, it's yeah, going to we'll get, get tied up. up so, um, Mick, let's get on to Cryo Bay. Where where uh, I, I don't know Cryo Bay that well. Um, where are the hot spots? Where's, where's your most favourite spot to fish um, in Crybay? For myself, and the centre of the universe over the last couple of months has been an area that they call the turn around Clifton Springs, which is yep. on the edge of the channel. And again, it's another marine safety issue there. Guys have been anchoring in the channel. Um, and an unfortunate thing that they're looking at over the next year or two is to put a 100 metre exclusion zone either side of all the channels in Port Phillip Bay. Yep. Um, but that has probably been the feature, you know, it, it, the boats really stack up out there. And one interesting thing that's happened out there over the last couple of years has been the silver whiting that guys have been catching while they've been fishing for these snapper, yeah, okay. dropping down the small sabiki rigs and catching those silver whiting. And they have been the number one bait for guys that have been able to get hold of those fish. Yeah. And it's really only been a feature the last two years that these fish, these silver whiting have come in with the snapper. Awesome. And they have been an awesome bait, you know. And 
if you're not anchored in the shipping channel, is there plenty of other water there? There is plenty of other water. So it's water. just people it's, they, they yeah. know, but they're breaking the rules. And yep. The sad thing is those guys um, lead to rule changes say, like that. That's going to that's gonna be the surefire way that they will get an exclusion zone if we yeah. just can't play, just can't play by the rules. Well, it's, it's that a, simple. It's the same thing with everything. It's the minority that's going to ruin Correct. it for everyone. And just don't do the wrong thing, really. I mean, yep. and it's only a matter of 20 metres out of the channel. Is, there's not and a lot right. of difference there, yeah. and you're right. You and know. these days with GPSs and maps and that, you can see exactly where the channel <laughs> is, right. so it's, there's no excuses, really. <laughs> Up next, Kramer's Mailbag and plenty more on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing We know what you'd rather be doing We know what you really got in mind we know you'd rather be out fishing And today's the day you're gonna wet a line Cause every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away, drift away. Every day's a good day for fishing day. See you down and tackle world today Talking fishing, talking fishing Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing and into the mailbag straight away boys there's only a few a little bit of a quiet week huh? everyone's, out, everyone's out christmas shopping i think so uh hi kramer i'd like to ask the question about ramp cost I know you can get a yearly ticket, but it's only for that one ramp. Why don't they allow a yearly ticket to cover all ramps from Western Port to Port Phillip Bay? Thanks, Eddie. Eddie, I think you should be Premier of the state. <laughs> uh, isn't it a complicated system? And uh, oh, so Eddie and, and so. maybe plenty of other people that don't understand, virtually every boat ramp is run by a different authority. So yep. on our side of the bay, and I'll, I'll ask you about yours in a sec, Mick, but on our side, you look at, say, Patterson River is run by Parks Victoria. You get down to Frankston, it's run by Frankston Council. You get down to Mornington, it's run by the Mornington Peninsula Shire. You get down to Martha Cove, it's run by the Martha Cove Development. You get to Anthony Nose at Dramana, it's run by a committee of management. You get <laughs> it already, it's too hard. The next one's Took already. the Rook, run by another committee of management. Then you get too down hard. to Rye, it's the Shire. Yeah. You get down to Tyrone, it's a committee of management yeah. again. Too get hard. down to Surrender, you know, now where I'm hard. headed. That's only a little bit. Mick, what about over <laughs> your side? Yeah, well, we're very lucky down our way because most of the um, boat ramps in the city of Grey Geelong are free and they're fantastic yeah, facilities. We've free? Got, we've got St Helens, Limeburners, Clifton Springs, St Leonard's. Free? Free, and they're great facilities. Then you get down to Queenscliff, which is run by the borough of Queenscliff, and that's a $10 a day parking, yeah. or I think it's $160 a year. It was $10 over our side in 1978. It's now, now it's about, 20 yeah. and, you, and you've got to realise that that, that ramp at Queenscliff, which is the one that um, you have to pay for, is probably the worst of all the facilities. There's no cleaning facilities, uh, there's only a uh, two lane ramp and you can imagine how busy that gets in yeah. summer mm. and uh, they really need to look at it down there because they're making a, a lot of money out of it. The, they the need to be talking there. to the Geelong Council or yeah. Shire or what whatever's get, going on because they're getting Geelong it done. Council to manage the rest of Port Phillip yeah, getting it yeah. done. <laughs> and they're fantastic <laughs> facilities. Limeburners and St Helens which are the Geelong in basically the two city ramps are yeah. fantastic facilities. There you go. Yeah. I'm a well, uh, so I'm a well played Geelong. That's no, unreal. I'm moving tomorrow. <laughs> uh, any jobs over there, Mick? <laughs> uh, next one. Evening, David. I met you on Mate's Day and a great day had by all. I have a question on, on mind and I probably and probably on many other Port Phillip Bay fishers. I don't seem to understand why there is a difference in slowing the netting down in Port Phillip Bay and totally stopping the netting in Western Port. Please explain. Anyway, once all the arguments are put on the table, by chance, could good operators be rotated between the two bays? Regards, Peter Sharp. Um, Peter, I, I'm not sure um, whether you misunderstood what's going on in Port Phillip Bay. It might be seen as a slowdown, but uh, netting in Port Phillip Bay must be gone by two, 2022, yep. so seven years' time. So. Um, 
it's there's a buyout period. Um, time will tell, boys. Yeah. I think you know, like the first buyouts are April two thousand sixteen. They're voluntary, so yeah. whoever wants to put their hand up in April 2016 can hand in their licence, get their payout, their compensation. Um, but if there's some left in the bay, they will definitely all be out by 2022. So, Peter, it is a yeah. full ban on netting, but it's just an, an eight-year implementation from the last election. So uh, there will be no netting in Port Phillip or Western Port, but there will be long lining. So yeah. eight, eight long liners remaining. So I hope that answers your question. No netting after two 2022. Yep. Uh, this is another one. Mick, and jump in here if you can. Hey, Kramer, I've been talking to the Bellarine Council about the state of St. Leonard's Ramp and indented, indented Heads Ramp and Point Richards Ramp on how shallow the need and the need to be dredged and maintained at a safe depth for boats. As on windy days of three days of wind, you get sand build up and they don't ever check them and maintain them. To make them aware, they need a, a dredge so us boaties can use them. I made a point, they hardly get dredged as this winter my other boat I had was sitting this, hitting the sand. If you remember, I wrote to you, David, and you spoke about it on your show at the time. This is the response I got from them, which I think is poor form. It said, thanks, Phil. As much, this is the council. Thanks, Phil. As much as we would love to do this, unfortunately, we cannot dredge all these areas all year round as the cost money and our budget is limited. We do manage 17 kilometres of coastline with 92% of our income derived from our holiday parks. This money needs to be allocated across a range of services, including boat ramp maintenance, coastal protection, asset management, cleaning and maintenance of public toilets, halls and camping facilities, vegetation management, landscaping, cleaning up rubbish, erosion mitigation and other such works and I can tell you Phil ain't happy exactly why the boat ramps need to be managed by one authority mm. that uh, simple and you've got to remember again those boat ramps are free yep you know, uh, there's, yeah. there's no, St Leonard's and Indented Head is is with our summer south easterlies and easterlies they yeah. are shocking ramps when the wind gets up in the afternoon because mm. it blows straight in on Point Riches has always been a bit of an issue with the sand that moves around yep. there but um I think if you know, we, we've got to be happy that we're not paying for these ramps, and if we've got to kind of have major work wanting to be done on those, mm. they're yeah. going to want to charge and, you to use them. And, mm. and, and we get it. The more people that can use the ramps, the more money, mm. you know, in the long term gets pumped into that economy and that for that local yep. council. But we understand it's got to go everywhere. Exactly why it needs to be managed by one authority. Yeah, if yeah. that was out of that shire or that council's hands. Yeah. Everyone's happy. The yeah. money from the boat ram supporting, whether it be by fishing, launching fees, parking yeah. fees, whatever, at least we can find out somehow from them where the money's going. Whereas they're trying to filter all this money throughout the whole shire or the whole council. Something's got to give. It's unfortunate that it seems to be the boat ramps that are at the loss yeah. mm. in, in most of them. M my opinion is all managed by one authority in the whole of Port Phillip and Western Port. No ramp fees, yep. but there's a levy of some sort yes. on your boat, uh, on your boat rego, yep. or your boat license, or your trailer rego. You yep. know, there's awesome. there's three sources of revenue That's right. that are totally about boats, where the money shouldn't be going to road taxes because you're already paying it through mm. your car. Yeah. Um, boat license, boat rego, trailer rego. Yep. There should be an allocation of that money that goes to the one single authority to maintain and upgrade boat ramps. And I'm no sure doubt about it. majority of the people wouldn't mind paying that little bit extra on those, knowing that they can go down to any of their local ramps and be able to launch and retrieve on any tide or through any conditions. If you'd like to write to me or these blokes, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, PO Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria 3197, or email kramer at ifish.com.au. Now, Mick, I've got a question. Over our side, if you can't catch a whiting, you go to St. Leonard's because that is the <laughs> capital of, of the world for King George Whiting. Yep. Is that the same over your side? Is St. Leonard's the place to go? Now, St. Le St. Leonard's seems to be where all the action is at the moment. Yeah. And we we have have had a quite a poor six last six months on the whiting, which yeah. the Maffrey down at Queenslie have had predicted a couple of poor years, which has been the last year and the year yep. before. 
they have predicted a really good season for this coming season and I, th I think we're going to really see the benefits of that in February, March, April next year. We've got a lot of small fish getting caught around St Leonard's at the moment, to around 30 centimetres. And as we know, those fish grow extremely quickly at this time of the year. I think it's something like an inch a month, yeah. basically. So yeah. come February, those 30 centimetre fish are going to be pushing 35, 36. And uh, I think we're really going to see a bumper season. It was, a, it was poor for the last six months and it is going to get better, I can pretty much assure you of that. Do the locals down your way sit back and go, geez, I wish these guys would bugger off they have a western port and leave us alone? <laughs> they're, not, they're not big fish at the moment, and down around Queenscliff, it, it, it's to the point, if you think you need to measure a fish, you throw it back. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Coming up, this week's Hot Spots, next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day. Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramming. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my body. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Hello, Richie Minnow here. It's now time for this week's fishing hotspots on Talking Fishing. Marvellous. You got a fan club in Geelong for Richie Minnow, Mick? Yeah, we have. There's a, a, a Richie Minnow. <laughs> they, want a, they, want a soft, they want a soft Richie Minnow. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Yeah. He, he is just an amazing <laughs> man, Richie Minnow. So let's get on to the hot spots. And the first one is the Queenscliff Bight and Queenscliff Harbour. Yeah, the, the Queenscliff Harbour's been a real feature over the last month. We normally get a big run of Pinky Snapper and Silver Trevally in there, mm. sort of starting October. And, and this year we've had those pinkies, which can be up to 50 centimetres, and guys are fishing for these with soft plastics. Now, when you say the harbour, describe the harbour. Where is it? Oh, it's, it's the marina. Inside the marina? It, you're fishing. There's, a, there's a, a huge tidal flow through the, the yeah. actual what we call a cut there. Yeah. And on the edge of the eddies and places like that have been fishing really well. For guys using um, soft plastics like your turtleback worm has been yep. probably one of the most popular. But... Um, this year the Trevally have been a real feature because they've been 50 centimetres plus a lot mm, of these fish, nice. where in past years you might have heard of a couple of these and uh, yeah, they, it's just been insane and the Barwon River's got a very similar run of fish at the moment too, so yeah, there you go. Yeah, cool. good fun. Next one is over the west, we were just talking about it a minute ago, St Leonard's and the Whiting are starting to really come in, in good numbers. Yeah, and they're going to improve and as, as, <coughs> as well as that, over those Whiting beds, if you fish the slack water, you'll pick up some fresh squid as well, yep. ideal bait for those Whiting, so as we said, they're only going to improve over the next few months. Mick, uh, your opinion quickly, um, I, I say that places like Rosebud, Rye, Serena, that they shut down a bit for January with yep. that, the amount of boat traffic. Does St Leonard's do that or is it fine right throughout that holiday period with a lot of traffic? I think it's it, it, you still get plenty of fish but those guys that fish into the night and in the in the middle of the night sort of stuff, you will do really well on the whiting. A lot of guys go home because the fish go off the bite on dusk but sometimes it, it can take them an hour or two to adjust and then they'll come back on once it gets pitch black. So it's worth hanging in there for that half an hour after dark. There you go. On the eastern side of Port Phillip Bay, there's a man called AB who said, don't mention <laughs> Carum, so we won't mention Carum. 21 metres. <coughs> we'll mention Chelsea. So go to Chelsea, don't go to Carum because yeah. AB will be there. Yeah. You're not allowed to go to AB's spot off Carum in 21 metres. So go to Chelsea and go deep and uh, not out to the shipping channel yeah. you're not allowed out there but go deep and there's been some fantastic catches hasn't yeah, there? The Paul Phillips snapper thing is well and truly in the swing of it now. Um, everywhere from, well, everywhere. Just fish for them. Absolutely, they? yeah. Uh, heading over into Western Port now and Coronella has got to be the place if you want a snapper. Mull if you away. want mull mull away. Away. Forget your snapper. Um, mull away. <laughs> big flathead. Yeah. Uh, the whiting are, are, are on there now too. Yep, so it's, it's just, I'd hate to see the queue for the boat ramp at Coronella. Oh, now that, that's a poor little ramp that's copped a flog in <laughs> Yeah, but what a great place to fish and uh, if you get the opportunity. Um, 
I don't even know what the weather's doing this it week. Doesn't I, haven't, matter. I haven't looked that far. <laughs> no, ahead, Sunday but, looks pretty good. But the next few days are really good. If you can yep. get out before work, the next three days are just sensational. Yep. So, um, okay, let's head inland now. And Lake Eildon is the place to fish if you want to get yourself a nice yellow belly or a cod because cod season is now open. open. Yep. Um, get to Lake Eildon, a beautiful place and plenty of places to launch, whether yeah. you go to Bonnie Doon or yeah. Pepin Point. Bonnie Doon is probably a little bit of lack of water there, but yeah. Pepin Point. Uh, down, in down town, all those, yeah, yep. Jerusalem Creek, all those sort of places, just fantastic places to go. Um, there's a few whispers going around, Mick, isn't there, that the cod will be open all year round in Lake Yildon maybe next year? Yeah, it'd be... Just it'd, heard the whispers? It'd, it'd really be fantastic to see that because a yeah. lot of guys head up there and it's a real boon for the area up there and mm -hmm. uh, to have a cod fishery that we could go to at any time of the year, I think it's just going to be a benefit for the town up there and all of us. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we mentioned a couple of those lakes over your back shoulder when you're standing in the shop at Tackwell Geelong. Yep. Uh, lake Parambit is our last hot spot. What's been happening down there? Oh, you got to be up really early in the morning, yeah. and I'd be thinking about trolling the edges, nice up, nice and close up to those weed beds, as well as that fishing those mud eyes early. There's been plenty of redfin caught. It's just going to be nice when that, the, the new stocking of brown trout sort of come online because they didn't stock yeah. them for a little while. And yeah, they, okay. they are a real feature of that lake, those trophy browns. How are those lakes closer to Geelong going for water levels? Because yeah. when you get out in the Western Districts and it's just about all it's over Red Rover, isn't it? But Bull and Mary's got a bad algal bloom at the moment, which yeah. happens every year. Yeah. Um, Parambit has dropped quite a bit in the last few weeks. And there's, there's other smaller lakes which... I won't mention too much, but they are getting difficult to get your boats in. Yeah. yeah. We need, need some rain. We need yeah, some rain everywhere, rain. I know. And, uh, well, there was a little bit this morning, but it just doesn't help. It's not enough, no, is it? No, and no. You and it can't stays hot see too, it. it just evaporates straight away. You just away. can't see it happening now, no. can you? No. Like summer's here, yeah. you just it's get a whiff really, that no. it's going to be hot. Yeah, yeah there's going to be a lot um, of trout under stress down in those lakes over the next few months. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where's your favourite lake right now? And I know we've given Lake Parambit, but where's your favourite lake right now? Oh, Parambit will always be my favourite lake because yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. it's just produced for me over the years and once those trout get back, those browns get, start to come online again, it's one of the few lakes in the state where you can go down and realistically n think that you're going to catch a 10 pound brown. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Let's have a look at what's coming up on Channel 31 now and tonight, straight after us, you've got Catch and Cook, Ron, Brett Geddes, Gina, they're cooking <laughs> the up a storm. Crew. The whole crew. I have to find out all their names. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than those three on it, but anyway, they're the ones we know. Uh, tomorrow morning on the fly, a great TV show. If you haven't seen it before, get up at 6.30 in the morning and have a look at that. Thursday morning, if you want to see a repeat of this show, 7 o'clock in the morning, followed by a couple of shows after that. Friday, there's a few on in the morning. Saturday, the big extravaganza starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, virtually runs right through till 1, then starts again at 6, right through till 8 o'clock. There you go. Plenty of Channel 31 fishing for everyone to the see. Home of fishing. It is. Yeah. Um, also heard the, the, there's a bit of a launch of a C31 YouTube channel coming up in the new yeah, year. So there you go. look out for that one. We'll certainly be talking about that yep. in the new year and you'll be able to see everything all on one YouTube channel. Be nice. Pretty, um, pretty, pretty good, I reckon. So, yep. yeah. Um, Mick, netting. Uh, you know, the, the, the home of the banning of the netting, where it all started, <laughs> the groundswell started on the shores of Cryo Bay, didn't it? And yeah. you must get that every day in the shop, Yeah, someone we, talking about it. We did, and, and there is a real buzz of excitement over what we're going to see happen over the next four or five years. Mm. And, and I think we're only going to see a, you know improvements, I hope, and especially with the whiting, the squid and things like that. Yeah. Um, but there is a real buzz around the place, and there's a lot of people put a lot of hard work into it, and everyone down at home really appreciates the work that has gone into this. So mm. There's a lot of... Uh, commercial guys that would operate out of Geelong, yep. would they? It would be, be pretty right in saying that. So yeah. they launch around some of your, your yeah, local ramps and that. So you've probably got a lot more interaction with netters over in the west than we see over in Port Phillip Bay. And even on the Mornington Peninsula, there's you know really only one or two operators that operate on that side. It's just a heavy presence over in you know that western side, isn't it? it it's, it's sheltered waters for a lot of them. Yeah. Um, you know, on the Avalon side, if it's if it's northerly, they fish up there. If it's the southerly wind, they'll they'll fish the Clifton Springs to Alcoa sort of area, and I mean it's it's the perfect depth. There's not a lot of structure there to foul their nets up and things. Um, so at night, especially, you will you'll really come across them, and um, yeah, it's it's something we've had to deal with for a lot of years. Mm. But um, so another eight years, and we won't see them anymore. There's 43 of them. Eight of them are going to stay in as long liners, and yep. won't be allowed to net after 2022. 
Uh, that leaves 35. What's your tip for how many will go out in April next year? Well, I think it's a sliding scale of the buyout. Yep. From, yeah, yeah, from they lose 10% so every 10%. year. So. Um, How many would you like to see? And if you don't say 35, you're in trouble. Yeah. Oh, well, when you're driving back down the July. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of inactive licences there yeah. too, guys that just don't use them. There, there might be, I don't know, 10 to 20 that really fish hard. Yep. Um, and on any given night, you might see on a, through a stretch of maybe 5 to 10 kilometres, there could be up to 5 or 6 netters working a stretch. Really? In wow. shore. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard. That is it hard. Is. It is. I no, never realised no it was all, like that. No wonder it all brewed from the shores. Yeah. Of <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah. Um, Ads, I want to ask you, and, and you too, Mick, but where do you reckon the most popular fishing destination is for the Christmas holidays? The most popular? Number one. You're allowed, allowed to say one in Victoria. Where's the number one oh. most popular fishing destination, do you think? Sorry, question without. Uh, are we talking not Trelly's backyard. Are we, are we talking <laughs> Victoria? Victoria as a whole. Where do you reckon the most people go to? Oh, it wouldn't have to be close. The like Mornington Peninsula would have to be. Oh, it's tough. I don't yeah. know. Because oh. everywhere that's got a caravan park, yeah. it's full. Yeah. <laughs> it's I know full. a lot of guys head up to the Murray too. Yeah, so, yeah. so it could be up near Kiowa, yeah. could yeah. be then, then anywhere. There's Apollo Bay and yeah. Queenscliff. Even 90 Mile Beach, that would yeah. fill up big yep. time. I was going to say Gippsland Lakes. Yeah, well, that's yeah. Well, so only like one Painesville. One, only one and one off it's each of us, and we're going to give three <laughs> reports it's next week. It's too hard. Now but, you may have to. <laughs> no, but how good is it, though? We're sitting here talking about what would be the most popular holiday destination in Victoria, and we've just named all of Victoria. Yeah, yeah. 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 We've just got this beautiful state People with so much spread out. diverse yeah. fishing. The other thing I love about the Christmas time is that, like, you know, everyone's, they've, they've, you know, they have been focused on snapper, and they get all their snapper gear, and we sell a million bomb sinkers and packs of pilchards yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Those fishos that are so set in their ways, they go every Saturday morning with their mates. Yeah. Like, you know, this time of year they're buying yabby pumps, yep, yeah. prawn nets, yeah. Yeah. little sieves to catch that's their bash right. yabbies, and also, and you just see people go and do something different at Christmas. And, and I reckon that's one of the best things to literally see. Literally, stuff they buy once a year, and they're just as excited and buying that stuff once a year than they are coming in and buying their two kilo block of pillies to yeah. go on a snapper trip every weekend. Yeah, it's great like time of year. The prawn lights, the hand spears, the prawn nets, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. they want to get some prawns on the table for Christmas dinner and Ex that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, exactly so right. We've had a few of them through this week, heading <laughs> off to get their prawns. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to make my mouth water, Mick. I tell you what, it's going to be a very big year for people getting away yep. and enjoying it. And I think we are in for a hot summer. That's it for Talking Fishing. We hope you enjoyed the show. Next week, we are joined on the couch by Rod Barber, a Senior Fisheries Officer with Fisheries Victoria. If you have any questions for Rod, please send them through via email to kramer at ifish.com.au. Until next Tuesday, uh, we'll see you on Talking Fishing. Stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your